गुड डे एवरी वन वेलकम टू दिस वीडियो इन विच वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द एट जीरो एट फाइव इंस्ट्रक्शन सो देर आर नियरली टू फोर्टी सिक्स इंस्ट्रक्शन इन द इंस्ट्रक्शन सेट ऑफ एट जीरो एट फाइव हाउ एवर इन दिस पर्टिक्यूलर वीडियो वी विल बी ओनली डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द इंस्ट्रक्शन दैट आर मोस्ट कॉमनली यूज फॉर प्रोग्रामिंग इन एट जीरो एट फाइव and before discussing those instructions we will first categorize instructions into different categories and then we will discuss the most commonly used instructions in each category and how are we going to categorize the instructions into different types of categories the four the most commonly used or we can say the most commonly categorization of instructions of 8085 instructions they are divided into five categories and the five categories are the first category includes data transfer instructions okay the second category of instructions are the arithmetic instructions the third category of instructions are the logic instructions the fourth category is the branch instructions and the fifth category is the machine control instructions we have already discussed about the the categorization of instructions into different categories and what are what are the instructions in each category going to do for the complete description about each category you have to see our previous video okay so let's discuss the instruction in each category one after other let's first start the data transfer instructions transfer instructions okay so in data transfer instructions the main aim is to transfer data from some source so there is some source and we have to transfer data or we can say move data or we can say copy data from source to destination okay so we have to take data from source and place that data into destination but keep in mind that when we are moving data from source to destination the source will remain as it is that means if in the source we have stored five after moving data from source to destination the destination will contain five and the data in source will remain the same and what was the data Okay, so this is the use of data transfer instructions. Now there are different versions of data transfer instructions, and why there are different versions of data transfer in instructions? It is because this source and this destination. There are different possible scenarios or different possible values for source and destination. What does it mean? It means that source can be a register. that means we have to transfer data from register and destination can also be a register that means transfer data from register to register so if we have to do this kind of transfer transfer data from register to register then the instruction that we are going to use is move move instruction move rd rs so these are the two registers and this says move data from this register to destination register so the first register is the destination and the second register is the source register for example if i have to move data from let's say data from register b to register c so b is my source and c is my destination so what type of instruction should i write i will write move data from 
B to C. This is the instruction that we are going to use. So if we have to transfer data from register to register, then what type of instruction we are going to use? Move RD RS. And this instruction is a one byte instruction. What does that mean? One byte instruction. One byte means that it can be represented in machine codes or in machine language using eight bits. Fine. Now this is one categorization. The source can be register and destination can be register. The other categorization is the source can be a value, a direct value. And destination can be a register as it is. Okay, let me rewrite it again because we have different such scenarios here. So what I am saying that we have a source. We have to transfer data from a source to a destination. And first category we said that if my source is register and my destination is also register. My source is register and my destination is register. Then I have to use move RD RS this instruction and it is a one byte instruction. Now the second thing that I am saying that let's say I have to directly move a value to a register. Okay, the value is given for example, the value and please keep in mind this value will be an eight bit value then I have to use an instruction move immediate immediate RD and value. Okay, this value as I said is an 8 bit value. For example, let's say I have to transfer data 68 H. So 68 in hexadecimal, I have to move this data into a register B. Then what type of instruction I will use? I will use move immediate B 68 H. This says take this data directly and place the data in B. And this instruction is a two byte instruction. What does that mean? Two byte instruction. It means the this particular instruction is represented in memory or we can say is encoded using 16 bits. The first eight bits will encode move immediate B. Okay. Move immediate B. The second byte will be this value, immediate value. So it is a two byte instruction. Okay. This is the second possibility. Third possibility is the source is memory and the destination is register. Okay. That means we have to take value from a memory. Let's say this is my memory. So let's make a memory here. For example, this is one address 2000 or 2005 H. Okay. 2005 H. So we have to do the source is memory. Memory means some location in memory. And let's say here we have stored 65 H because each memory stores how many bits? 8 bits. And 8 bits in hexadecimal can be written using two hexadecimal digits. Okay. So it says the take the data from memory and place this data into a register. So we have to place this 65 into register. Okay. So there are two types of instructions that are used in this category. So one type of instruction is a simpler move instruction. Okay. And another category is load instruction or we can say load instruction. So that means you can use either move instruction or some version of load instruction. Load, instru load instructions are of different types. Okay. So we are going to. So we are going to look at different versions of load.
different versions of load instructions in a minute but as i said that there are two different types of instructions either you can use mu instruction or load instruction let's first see mu instruction if we are using a mu instruction then there is only one mu instruction that is used and that is mu mu r d and m okay what this instruction does it is saying this m wherever m is written m means go to register pair hl okay so in our microprocessor 8085 there are two registers these two are registers h and l as we know that in 8085 the registers can be used alone or they can be paired for example b can be paired with c d can be paired with e and h can be paired with l so there are three register pairs that we can use either b c d e and h l however whenever m is written m means this register pair okay so mu says that look at this register pair which register pair h l okay and get the value from this register pair okay so get the value from hl pair so how many bits will be in hl pair h it each register stores 8 bits so that means these two together will store how many bits 16 bits so get a 16 bit value from hl pair okay and using this 16 bit go to memory okay and from that memory get the value and place the value in r d please keep this in mind what this what this instruction is doing this instruction is saying that go to hl pair get the value from hl pair that will be 16 bits these 16 bits will be used to go to one particular location in memory and from that location get a one byte data and place that data in this register okay now i said let's say i have to get a data from this location from 2005h that means if i use mu instruction this address should be in hl pair that means h should contain 20 and l should contain 05 okay now let's say i have to move this data into a register b into a register b then what will be my mu instruction mu b m so what this instruction is going to do m is here m means go to hl pair so what is stored in hl hl we have 2005 so it will make the address 2005 then it will go to memory memory is here take the data from here 2005h what is data here 65h and place this data in b so the final value in b will be 65h so this is how we can use mu instruction to move data from memory to register and as i said that we can use the mu instruction to transfer data from memory to register the memory address should be stored in hl pair okay there is no other pair we can use apart from hl pair if we are using mu instruction this is the only one version of mu instruction where we can transfer data from memory to register okay so if we are using a mu instruction then what kind of instruction i can use mu r d m and m will be h l pair okay now as i said that there is an another method to use load instructions okay so let me write some load instructions here for example one instruction is l d a what l d a says this instruction has an address here before explaining this instruction please keep in mind that this mu instruction is a one byte instruction and it can use 
द मेमरी एड्रेस विच इज स्टोर इन एन एच एल पियर इट कैन नॉट यूज दिस पियर और बी सी पियर और डी ई पियर इट कैन ओनली यूज विच पियर एच एल पियर सो इफ आई हैव टू गेट द डेटा फ्रॉम मेमरी आई हैव टू फर्स्ट स्टोर द एड्रेस इन दिस एच एल पियर देन ओनली आई कैन यूज मो इंस्ट्रक्शन हाउ आर देर आर डिफरेंट वर्जन ऑफ लोड वट लोड सेज वन वर्जन इज एल डी ए इंस्ट्रक्शन इट से गो टू दिस एड्रेस ओके दिस एड्रेस एंड टेक डेटा फ्रॉम दिस एड्रेस दिस मेमरी एड्रेस एंड प्लेस द डेटा इन एक्यूमलेटर ओके सो दैट मीन इज लोड इंस्ट्रक्शन लोड इंस्ट्रक्शन गेट्स डेटा गेट्स data from memory load gets data from memory and places the data in accumulator always it places the data in accumulator here mu can take data from memory and can place in any register register of your choice for example b c d e whatever register you want to use however load instructions take data from memory and can place data only in accumulator they cannot place data in some other register okay so for load instructions destination is always a and this destination is implicit implicit means it is not written in the instruction but it is assumed by the instruction that my destination is a and this a is accumulate okay so now this address so as i said load instruction always loads in which destination accumulate okay now comes the address or we can say now comes the operand this operand can be either a direct memory address okay that means it will be like this for example load a and memory address 2050h it will say go to this memory address okay and take data from this memory address and place this data in okay go to this memory address take one byte data from there and place that data in a accumulator fine so the address here is given directly in the instruction other method is lda this is a register pair we are not giving the address direct here instead we are giving a register pair like we used to give here here in mu instruction the address is given as a register pair and what was the register pair hl pair so it says go to this address which is stored in this register pair and what was this register pair hl go to this address and take data from that address okay likewise here we have one version of load instruction where instead of giving a direct address we are giving a register pair and that register pair will store the memory address for example it is not written at lda but it is written as ldax ldax says that copy the data into register a but that memory location from which we have to copy that address is present in register pair let me explain it with the help of an example l d a x b let's say i have written this instruction it says this instruction says that go to this register pair b whenever we write b b means b c register if we write d d means d e register pair and if we write h h means h l register pair so it says go to b c register pair let's say in b c we have stored 2006 okay in b and c 
in B we have stored 20 and in C we have stored 06. That means 2006. It says read this BC pair. So what is there in BC? 2006. Now go to the memory at this location 2006. Get data from there and place that data in accumulator. Okay. So these are the two versions of load instructions. You can directly load from memory or you can give the memory address in indirectly through using a register pair. In move instruction, the register pair that we can use is only HL. Okay. However, the destination register, we can use destination register of our choice. And this instruction differs from this instruction is that this instruction uses destination always accumulator. However, its register peer address, this can be any register peer B, C, D, E or H, L. However, in more instruction, this can be only H, L register peer. Okay, so we can move data from memory to register either using a move instruction or using a load instruction. Okay, so these were the three categories that we discussed. Now there is another category. Third, now the fourth one. So this is same source. We have source. Source and we have destination. The fourth category is the three categories that we discussed if register to register, a direct value to register, from memory to register, from memory to register, you have move and load. The fourth category that we are going to discuss is when we have to transfer data from register to memory. Okay, register to memory. Let's see here. The fourth category is taking data from register to memory. So in the previous case, it was memory to register. And what were the two different mechanisms using move instruction or using load instruction. Okay. So now we have a reverse taking data from register and storing that data in memory. Here also we have two different categories. One is move instruction and another category is store instruction. Okay, how we are going to use move? Move says move m to move m and some register, any register. Okay, this says take data from this register, it is a one byte data, and place data in memory. Place data in memory. And the address of memory can be found out from this register peer. So address of memory where we have to store this value that address is stored in HL peer. It is completely the reverse of this instruction. This instruction was saying take data from the memory and that address is stored in HL peer and place the data in register. And this is the reverse. This says take data from register and place the data in memory. However, wire in memory, that, that particular address is stored by HL pair. Okay. So if I have an instruction, if I have a memory like this, and there is one location 2005. Fine. And I want to store my data at this location, the data that is stored in B. Okay, so first what I have to do, I have to place this in HL pair. Okay, so H will have 20 and L will have 0, 05. Okay, then after that I have to write the instruction move M B. So M will be register pair HL. What, what is there in HL? 22005. So that means go to the memory at 2005 and take the data from B and put that data into the memory. So, so this is the only instruction that is available in case of transferring data from register to memory when we are using 
मू इंस्ट्रक्शन प्लीज रिमेंबर दिस मू इंस्ट्रक्शन इज ए वन बाइट इंस्ट्रक्शन एंड हियर सोर्स कैन बी एनी रजिस्टर सो सोर्स कैन बी एनी रजिस्टर ए बी सी डी ई एच एल वॉट एवर यू वॉन्ट बट द एड्रेस कैन ओनली बी गिवन यूजिंग एन एच एल पियर वी कैन नॉट यूज एनी अदर रजिस्टर पियर फॉर एग्जाम्पल बी सी और डी then another category of instruction that is doing the same transferring data from register to memory those are store instructions okay like in load instructions we have two different categories one is load lda and another category was ldax so here we we are giving address and here we we are giving register peer it was saying go to this address get data from that address and place the data in accumulator and it was saying go to the address stored in register peer address in memory go to that address and take data from that address and place that data in accumulator so this was giving address directly but this was giving direct address indirectly using a, a register peer similarly we have two versions of store one is sta address and another is stax register peer okay so what what it means it means that this particular instruction what it is doing it is saying go to this address this address this is how many bits will be it will be 16 bit address go to this address in memory and place the data that is stored in accumulator at that address okay so it is saying take the data from accumulator and store that data into memory but at what location that location can be given by this address okay the similar operation is performed by this particular instruction it is saying take data from a a is accumulator and store at location or we can say store at address and that address is stored in register peer for example if i write s t a x d so it will first read data from this peer d e peer okay let's say d is stores 1007 so it will read this value 1007 then it will go to the memory at this location 1007 and it will place the value of accumulator at that location the fifth category is so the four categories that we discussed register to register value 8 bit value to register memory to register register to memory the fifth category is value that value is 16 bit to register peer okay so let me write here so the fifth category is take a value that value will be 16 bit number and place that value into a register peer okay destination is register peer and source is a value 16 bit value for example here i used to say in hl peer for example i have to store 2005 i have to store this how can i store this value so i can do following for example move immediate h20 and move immediate l05 so using these two instructions i can place 20 in h and 05 in l so it is an 8 bit this is also 8 bit and for that category we have already discussed how to transfer 8 bit value into a register however there is category of a of move instructions where we can directly move 
16 bit value into a register pair. So here we have 16 bit value. So we can directly put this value into this pair. So the most significant byte will go into H and the least significant byte will go into L. And the instruction that is used is LXI. Then, then we have destination. So what is destination here? register pair. This destination can be B. So B means BC pair. D, D means DE pair or H, H means HL pair. So destination and 16 bit value. So that means if I write LXI H2005. So what this instruction is going to do, it will use HL register pair. It will place 20 in H and 0, 5 in L. Okay. So either you can use these two instructions or you can directly use this instruction. Okay. So this is another category of data transfer instructions. The sixth category is, sixth category is, source is, our source is input device. Okay. And destination is a register. However, in microprocessor 8085, the destination register when we are taking data from an input device is always an accumulator. We cannot use any other register. There is no instruction in 8085 that can transfer data from an input device to any other register. There is only one instruction and that instruction transfers data from input device to a register, to an accumulator, not any other register. Okay. I will discuss this instruction, but let me write the seventh category. Seventh category will be take data from a register and place that data into an output device. Okay. So register that we can use is only accumulator. So it is a reverse of sixth category. Seventh is reverse of sixth. Take data from accumulator and place that data on an output device. So let me write here those two categories. So the sixth category is sources input device input device and we know the input device can be represented using 8 bit address that is also called a port address and destination is accumulator and the instruction that is for this particular transfer transferring data from input device to accumulator is in instruction in then port address let's say i am writing in 65h it says go to this input device whose address is 65h take data from that input device and place that data in accumulator now let's say i have to take data from an input device whose address is 68h port address is 68h and i have to place the data in c in register c can I do it directly? No. Why? Because as I said that in microprocessor 8085, there is only one instruction for reading data from input device and that instruction can read data only in A. We cannot read in other register. So how we can achieve this? We can achieve this by doing an indirect method. What I am going to do? I will first read data from this input device into an accumulator. And then from an accumulator, I will move data to C. I will move data to C. So indirectly, I have transferred data from this input device to C. Directly, I cannot do that. The seventh category of data transfer instruction is from register A from accumulator to output device. And that for particular purpose, we have out instruction, out port address. So this says, let's write an example. 
H. This says take data from an accumulator and give that data to an output device whose address is 65 H. Now, for example, if I have to take data from register B and give it to output device whose address is 100 H, sorry, whose address is 98 H. How can I do that? I will do first transfer this data into A. So I will first transfer data from B to A. Then use out instruction to transfer data from A to this output device. Directly, I cannot transfer from B to output device. Okay. So from here, we can learn this that whenever we have to interact with an input device or an output device. We can only interact with input and output devices through an accumulator. We cannot interact using some other register. Okay. So this completes our discussion about the data transfer instructions. Okay. Let me write a program in which we will use these data transfer instructions and then we will start the discussion about the other category of instructions in 8085. So before writing a program, we have to, uh, we, we will use one instruction which is called a HALT instruction. Okay, this is a special instruction that is used in microprocessor 8085. What this instruction does, it stops executing a program program and our microprocessor enters into wait state okay moreover our address bus and data bus they are kept in high impedance state. That means they are not used at this current time. Okay. And this instruction is usually put at the end of every program. So it also depicts the end of program. This instruction, HALT instruction, HLT. So what it does, it stops executing a program and microprocessor enters into wait state. So let me write some examples to understand data transfer instructions. Okay. Let's say the program is, let's write a program, a simple program. Move data 50 H in register B and display this data at output device whose address is 65 H. Okay, let me write a program. So what it is saying? That it is saying that in B, we have to place 50 H this data. We have to move this value into B and then this value, which is stored in B, we have to give this value to an output device and the address of that output device is 65 H. Okay. So for moving data to B, what kind of instruction we will use? We will use move immediate instruction and for giving output to 65 H, we will use out 65 H. Okay. However, what is this instruction going to do out 65 H? It will take data from accumulator and will give that data to 65 H. Okay. Or we can say give that data to an output port or output device whose address is 65 H. But what is this, this program saying? This program is, say, is saying that take this data and give this data to 65 H output device whose address is 65 H. But this instruction is saying take A 
and give this data to this output device. So what we are going to do after moving this 50 into B, we will give this B to A. Okay. And how we can give the data of B to A, we can give by writing move instruction. And then we will write out instruction. Then out will take A and will give that A to an output device. So let me write the program. It will be move immediate B 50H. Fine. So it will take 50 and place that 50 in B. Then we will move the data from B to A. Then write move A comma B. Take this data and place this data in A. Then what are we going to do? Out. Take this data from A and give that data to an output device whose address is 65H. Okay. Then we have to halt. Halt means stop the program okay so this is the program for this particular problem and this program is written in assembly language so it is written in assembly language however when our microprocessor is executing it is it executing the assembly program no it is executing the machine program. So we have to convert this assembly program into machine program. Machine program means convert each instruction into binary. That is done using an assembler. So how many instructions are there? One instruction, one instruction, two instruction, three instruction, four. Okay. So we have to take this program convert this program into machine program and then load this machine program into memory but where in memory will we load this program we will load this program by giving a load address let's say i want to load this memory load this program starting in memory starting at address 1000 so i will start from 1000 and then move on so let's see how our assembler converts this assembly program into a machine language program. Okay. So as I said, this particular instruction, let's see each instruction. This is a two byte instruction. While the first byte is opcode. Okay. So we have to find the encoding of this. Move immediate B. What is the encoding of move immediate B? The encoding of move immediate B is this. So uh, I will write it here. Move immediate B in 8 bits is written as like this 0000010110. Zero, 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 one, one, zero. Okay. Then the second byte will be 50H. So what is 50H in, in binary? 50H in binary is write the binary for this and binary for this four bits five in four bits is represented as zero one zero one and zero will be represented as zero 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 okay and we want to load this program starting at thousand so if this is my memory so let me make a memory so let's say these are memory locations. Okay, this is thousand, thousand one, thousand two, thousand three, thousand four, thousand five, and so on. Okay, so the first instruction that will be stored at thousand. So what we are going to store since it is a two byte instruction so that means this instruction will be stored at two locations 1000 and 1001 at 1000 we will store the op code that is 00000110 and at 1001 we will write 50h so that will be 01010000 instead of writing in binary we can write it in hexadecimal 
to make it easy for us to understand. For example, hex code is 06 for this. And for this, hex code is 50H. So it is in hexadecimal. So at 1000, we will store 06. And at 1001, we will store 50H. Okay. Why 06? Because it is the encoding of mu i b. And 50H is the encoding of 50H. So now we have to encode this. The encoding or the code of mu a to b is 78H. So I am writing in hexadecimal to make it easy. In a state, we have to write in binary because actually in memory, we will be storing the binary, not hexadecimal. Okay. So at 1002, we will be having 78H. Now comes 1003. This instruction is also a two byte instruction. So this will be stored at 1003 and 1004. At 1003, we will store out, out opcode and the encoding of out is D3 in hexadecimal. So here we will store D3H. And the second byte is the address, which is 65H. So here we will store 65H. Then comes the last instruction. It is a one byte instruction and the encoding of halt is 76 H. So at this instruction, we will, this memory location, we will store 76 H. So we have converted this program into assembly and then loaded that program into memory. Now our microprocessor will start the execution. So in program counter, we will have 1000 first. So it will get the instruction from 1000, then 1001, 1002, 1003, 1004, 1005. When it gets 1005, what it is going to get? 76 H, that is halt. It will go into the halt state or wait state. So this is how our program is executed in microprocessor 8085. Fine. So every instruction is converted into machine program and that machine program is loaded into memory. For example, in your lab sessions uh, that you will be doing, if you have a microprocessor, okay, you have a microprocessor kit. In that microprocessor kit, if for example, you want to run this program, this particular program, you will first write this program on a rough notebook, on your notebook, okay? Then you will use the, we can say you will use the documentation that is available with microprocessor 8085 and you will see what is the encoding of each instruction. And then you will enter that encoding into your microprocessor memory. Then your microprocessor will start executing this program from the memory itself. Okay, so what I'm going to say here, let me make it here. For example, our microprocessor kit. Microprocessor kit. So that will be a complete kit that we will be using in labs. So it will have a microprocessor. So it will be having a microprocessor. Let's say microprocessor 8085. And it will have memory. This is memory. It will have a keyboard. Keyboard will have, it won't be a keyboard like you usually use in your computers, but basically this will be a keyboard where there will be keys with hexadecimal numbers. For example, 0, 1, 2, 3, 9, then A, B, C, D, E, and F. Hexadecimal numbers. And also there will be a reset key execute key there are different keys okay so i am not going to explain everything here so these will be different keys now let's say you want to execute this program using your microprocessor kit we have to execute this program and the encoding of this program is for example this encoding of this particular instruction is oh, sorry this is mu image 8 mu image 8 is 06 then this 50 so it is written in hexadecimal 
okay mu ab is 78h this out uh, 65 is d3 is for out and 65 is for 65 and halt is um, what was for halt halt was 76h okay so this is the encoding we will write this program or we can say this particular data into it as memory into the microprocessor kits memory okay so we have to write this into it as memory okay so we cannot write this because it is written in assembly however our microprocessor only understand is binary so instead of writing in binary we will write in hexadecimal okay so we will write this hexadecimal in memory inside our microprocessor we have a software which is called a monitor program monitor program okay it is like an operating system we have operating system in our computers so like for microprocessor 8085 we have a monitor program when we are entering hexadecimal numbers into a memory this monitor program is internally converting these hexadecimals into binary and storing binary into the memory okay so let's say we have to store this program starting at address 1000 h so at 1000 we will store 06 at 1001 we will store 50 at 1002 78 then 1003 1004 1005 so first job is to store this program into memory okay then what we have to do we have to inform this microprocessor that we have stored this program now you have to start you have to execute this program starting from address 1000 h so the first job is storing program into memory and the next job is to execute the program execute the program and how we are going to execute the program or how our microprocessor will execute the program basically we have to give the starting address so what is the starting address 1000 so we have to place this 1000 into program counter after placing this address into program counter we will tell the microprocessor to start executing the program then it will execute this particular program so let's see how we will store this program into memory here as i said our microprocessor kit it has different components on the chip so there is one chip one kit and on that kit there are different components here i am showing only two or three components one is the microprocessor another is memory and the third part is keyboard here i am giving you a general procedure to run a program into a microprocessor kit there are different versions of microprocessor kit but here i am giving a general introduction how we have to execute program using a microprocessor okay so what we are going to do we will first do reset okay press a reset button we will press a reset button then we will enter the starting address of memory so what is the starting address 1000 after entering 1000 so we will also have an display here so display is also there okay display has two parts one is the address part and another is the data part so ba basically it is showing the address of memory and the data at that memory or it can be used to display some other contents but here simplicity let us say that this is the address and this is the data okay so first as i said we will press the reset button we will enter 1000 1000 and there will be another button which is called a next okay so we will do next next will go here and we will enter the data here what should we enter at 1006 <coughs> so using this keyboard we will enter 06 then we will do next next will be 1000 after 1000 what will be the next address 1001 at 1000 we will store 50 then 1002 78 then 1003 we will store d3 then 1004 we will store 65 then 1005 we will store 76 
okay after storing all these hexadecimal digits into memory what we are going to do we will do the reset again okay after doing the reset there will be a go button okay so we will press go after pressing a go we will enter address 1000 so when we are pressing the go it is giving us that enter the address which you want to place in program counter so we will enter address 1000 this 1000 will be pro will be uh, entered into the program counter and there will be another key which is called execute after entering this address into program counter we will run the execute but or we will push the execute button and this microprocessor will start executing this particular program which has been stored into the memory okay so this is how we are going to execute a program using a microprocessor kit fine so up to this point we have uh, completed the discussion about um, the data transfer instructions in microprocessor 8085 and we have also discussed how we can write programs and how those programs are then executed by our microprocessor basically we write programs in assembly language first and convert those programs into binary format so we are not actually writing the binary format we are writing in hexadecimal format and we are entering this hexadecimal program into memory and there is a monitor program inside our microprocessor which is converting these hexadecimals into binary and actually storing the binary into memory then you using this particular keyboard we will be storing our program into memory and then our microprocessor will execute that particular program and we will be getting the final output okay so fine so is this clear to everyone so now let's move to the other section but the other section that we have to or we can say the other part that we have to discuss is the second category of instruction so as we have started this lecture that we have to discuss about the 8085 instructions and we have categorized those instructions into five different categories and in today's lecture we completed the data transfer instructions and also we write one program that is using those data transfer instructions so we have to now discuss about the data uh, arithmetic instructions okay and there are other instructions logic instructions branch instructions and machine specific instructions that we have to discuss but we have to first look at the second category and the second category is arithmetic instructions okay so we will discuss about the arithmetic instructions and other classes of instructions in 8085 in the next class let's meet in that particular class till then goodbye